Hi everybody, Ziv Simon here. I'm the creator of Surgical Master. Welcome to this video. In this one, I'm going to show you how I'm planning a central incisor implant with a computer software. And I want you to pay attention to all the important details that are going to make a big difference at the time of surgery. This patient was referred to me by Dr. Mitch Levitt from Los Angeles, California. He's an amazing dentist and is also a very good friend of mine who referred this patient to me that had external root resorption on an upper central incisor. And in this video, you're going to see me talking to Sam Malawi, a master dental technician from Beverly Hills Lab. He's also the owner of the lab, uh, who is on the line with me. We both are sharing a screen, meaning he's seeing what I'm seeing on the software. So you see that, and he's giving me his feedback from a technician point of view. And, I, and it was important for me to share this with you because when you're planning an implant in the aesthetic zone, it's so important to get it in the right position. And I believe the technician involved in the case has a lot to do with the planning because after all, he's the one making the crown for you and his feedback and contribution to the case is just as important as the surgeon and the restorative dentist. We work as a team. So this patient presented with uh, an upper left central incisor that had external root resorption. We had a CT scan that showed the resorption in the coronal third of the root. It went into the pulp. The patient was already symptomatic. And in this video, I'm going to show you the computerized planning and the final decision on the implant position. I hope you enjoy that. So this is what we have. You with me? Yeah. Okay, so here's the model before the extraction, tooth number nine is going to be replaced. Yeah. You see the position of the tooth, the overlap and the... Oh. You see that? Okay. I see, I see that. And this tooth has tooth number nine, has a severe resorption. You see this on the buckle. And it's already inside the nerve. I see. Right here. So this is why we're replacing the tooth. So the other thing I have is a virtual extraction of the tooth and I also had a virtual extraction from the socket so you can actually tell where the socket is. You see the socket? Yeah, I see. Okay, so we have a pretty good bone on the palate and we have the tooth. Yeah, so we have the tooth and we have the tooth extracted virtually. Yeah. Okay, pretty cool. So here it is. So we have the implant. Okay. Oops, sorry. Okay, here's the position of the implant. Okay. And it's probably not ideal at the moment. That's why I wanted to uh, just run it by you. I'm sorry? No, it's not ideal at all, but uh, let's, let's uh, finalize it. So, okay. so you want it to be a little bit more mesial? I'm sorry, more distal? No, so first thing, just uh, apically tell the implant to be more lingualized and the head of the implant more so the buffer. You want the head of the implant, meaning the, the platform or the apical part? Okay. Okay. A little no. more. A little more. Yeah. And then now, bodily, move everything a millimeter. To which direction? Buckle. Oh, really? Yeah. So now you have uh, the implant coming through the through the buckle surface. Well, you see that the here, you see that the trajectory of the implant is going beyond the incisal edge position. That's fine. Uh, you, what implant you putting there? We're going to use a Nobel conical connection, 4.3. I'll use angle screw channel, 15 degree. I can get you uh, get away with it. Okay. And what is the reason we're doing this so far to the buckle? Okay. Well, did, let me ask you this: Do you have enough buckle bone now on the buckle and the lingual? Yeah. Perfect. It's right. very good. What's the depth of the implant in reference to the tissue? 
Okay, we don't know the tissue roughly, but I can make a measurement. Yeah, please. Okay, the measurement right now is from the mid buckle, 5.46, a little bit deep. Let's, let me make a measurement. Let's let me measure five, and then we can we can sink it exactly to this level. Okay, four point nine. You're right on it. Yeah, we're right there. Okay, perfect. Now show me a buckle view of the implant on the image. Yeah, right, right there. Where is it? Do you want to see the? Uh, I can show you the transparency with the roots. Okay. So, so you see it. You see how the roots are positioned. Let me make a bigger view of this. Okay. And then, now, since the implant, the axis of the implant more toward the distal. So I'm tilting the axis of the implant. Toward the distal. So you want the, when you say the, when you say, so you want the apex a little bit to the distal, right? Correct. Okay. okay. Do you like this transparent look or you want it more... Um... No, this is good. I like this. Okay. You want a buckle view? Yes, please. Okay. okay. Can you draw a line on the two adjacent pieces of the implant? Okay, let me get rid... Let me get rid of the... Let me just keep this in place, right? That's going to be easier. So let's draw a line of the con uh, contact areas, correct? Okay. Okay. And one more line here. It's not really parallel to that. Don't you think it's a concern coming t so much through the to the buckle? You're not concerned with that? Well, why is it? It's, a, it's an ideal uh, location. It doesn't matter if uh, the incisal edge now, the, uh, this is coming off the incisal edge. You put the conical connection, you're going to use the angle through channel on it. But much better than this whole implant is placed too lingual, then the contour of the emergence profile on the buckle going to be challenging. Mm, okay. And how about how about if I I mean I can technically move it a little bit to the palatal just a little bit. I could. And I actually have better bone engaging to the palate. Okay, then you you, you move it uh, bodily. Bodily yeah, without changing the angle. It's not changing the angle, just moving it bodily. Yeah, but now look at the head of the implant on the lingual. It's bur there's barely a bone there, no? Now let me undo it. Um, there is a millimeter of bone, probably. Let me see. That's good enough for you? Well, it's... I prefer that than having the implant too close to the buckle. But uh, listen, anywhere we look at it, and I'm go just going to take it to the extreme, and I'm going to undo it right away. Listen, this is from a surgical perspective. This is the safest, right? But yeah. from yeah. from a, uh, <laughs> it's not going to work for us. So, okay. so we can do custom abutment. Okay, 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 okay. So, so I would go where the best bone is, and not to worry too much about. Uh, Getting this okay, you're restoring the case, so it's on you. Oh, that's fine. Okay, okay, good. No, I re I respect your opinion. I uh, I wouldn't uh, take the template more lingual to get the screw channel coming from the lingual. Okay. Because remember, you see how this crown is uh, overlapped distally. Yes, it is. So when you bring. 
think it's more lingual. It's gonna be, uh, I would say, uh, very. The answer would be way more lingualized than it's supposed to. I see. If not, we have to make a smaller tooth to fit in the space. We can actually have to go back and copy what she has. If not, that tooth will be narrower than the adjacent. Right. So basically, what we're thinking, we're going to give this patient the same what she had before. Okay, so it's still going to be an overlapping crown. Uh, most likely, and I don't know her occlusion, that could be an occlusion problem that the crown is like this. Why would it be an occlusal problem? That means maybe there's no room on the occlusion to bring this two small uh, in. Now, it's overlapping maybe because of function, the two gets to be overlapping. Yeah. And it's symmetrical, I mean, not symmetrical, but it's, you know, it's, she's overlapping between six and seven. Okay, okay. So let me just look at the space between the roots, if you don't mind, just yeah, so yeah. we just so we make sure. Um, so here is the distance in the platform. Here's the platform of the implant. We have we have some room here. We have more room. Uh, to the central. Would you feel comfortable if I move this implant bodily a little bit to the mesial? Or is that going to be too much? What do you think? Let me look at this. Can you make the image bigger? Are you talking about this one? Yeah, this is it. Okay. I, I, probably not. No, I, I like it. You like that? situation now whatever okay and look you have no root uh, you have how many millimeter on each you have space nothing is touching nothing is close enough you see this hole in the tooth you see the hole yeah it's pretty impressive no impressive man you can look through it Mashlam, my you, can, you can see the future. Yeah. Um, yeah. So in terms of in terms of uh, space, it's going to be the closest closer to the platform, 1.8. And then yeah. as you go down, of course it tapers, so it's not an issue. And it's far away from. I mean, it's not touching the canal. You see, the canal yeah. is safe. It's far away. Yeah. I mean, it's not far away, but it's not going into the canal, which is important. And we have pretty good distance to the buckle plate. Yeah, that's nice. Okay. Are you going to pay for it too? Uh, no problem. <laughs> okay, my friend. Listen, I really appreciate the uh, the feedback. Um, Perfect. No problem. Yeah, this is nice. Nice case. Nice case. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Good, my friend. And we're not going to do immediate loading. I think we want to put a healing abutment. And then uh, later on, uh, mold the tissue, okay. and uh, make definitely make a provi uh, a provisional. Okay. Okay. Sounds good, man. All set. Thank you so much. Yeah, you Take care. Okay. Talk to you later. I appreciate the time. Yeah, you. Take care. Bye. bye bye. I hope you found this video useful. Uh, the planning session was very useful to me in planning the surgery, and as you can see, uh, I was able to replicate the exact same position of the computerized planning into the patient's surgery that was done already. So um, everything went uh, extremely well and, and is planned and I'm going to show you the case in future videos. If you like this video, feel free to share it with other dentists and go to my website, surgicalmaster.com to sign up for my weekly email and blog. I have many more videos to share with you about surgery in the aesthetic zone, implants, computer-guided procedures, and many, many more. In the meanwhile, keep learning, keep trying and practicing, perfect your surgical techniques, and have surgical success. I'll see you in the next one.